The U.S. is set to impose billions of dollars worth of tariffs on Chinese goods Friday. But as market watchers fear an all-out trade war, Isaac Stonefish writes in the Washington Post, companies should instead be worried about boycotts on U.S. products in China. Isaac Stonefish is a CBSN contributor and senior fellow at the Asia Society's Center on U.S.-China Relations. He joins me now from Goldsboro, Pennsylvania. So, Isaac, in your Washington Post article, you wrote, American companies in China should be wary of more unofficial responses to these tariffs. Can you elaborate on that? I think the biggest worry for American companies that have large operations in China is that Beijing will decide to say, find that they committed tax evasion or tax fraud or slow down permitting processes or cause goods that they're importing to have unexplained troubles at the border or even most worryingly gin up a boycott against the goods that they're selling in China. And the advantage of Beijing doing this is it allows for plausible deniability. It allows for Beijing to say, hey, listen, Starbucks, for example, the company I wrote about in my article, it's not that we, Beijing, are punishing Starbucks. It's that the people of China are frustrated by this, and this isn't us. Hmm. Well, if it came to it, what would an all-out trade war look like between the U.S. and China? Well, it certainly seems like we're marching in that direction. Right now, as of 1201, we have that $34 billion of, of tariffs that will be levied. Beijing says it's going to respond. Trump has talked about putting tariffs on all of the goods that the U.S. imports from China, which is roughly half a trillion dollars of goods. So we could see, I mean, it would certainly be an unprecedented economic move, and we could certainly see it hit exporters specifically who work on China. We could really see it change the nature of the U.S.-China relationship, which over the last 30, 40 years has really been, despite several problems and many problems, really been about economic cooperation. So we could see the U.S. move economically away from China and China economically move away from the U.S. Well, looking forward, do you think this is going to get worse before it gets better? It certainly seems like that. The Trump administration and the Xi Jinping administration in China have shown no signs of wanting to back down and have shown little willingness to really negotiate with good faith. So it seems like both sides are going to just keep pushing until the other side calls chicken. Well, it was interesting. The outrage was immediate. Fires set, roads blocked. Protesters say they can't afford Haiti's new fuel prices. With chaos out on the street of the capital, Port-au-Prince, several people decided to spend the night at work. Many businesses closed their doors. My wife is going to deliver our baby. She needs a cesarean, but every hospital we go to, we can't find a doctor because of the protests. I don't know what to do. The government announced an increase of up to 50 percent for diesel, gasoline and kerosene. But the hike, a liter of diesel, will now cost four dollars, nearly five dollars for regular gas. In a country where about 80 percent of workers earn less than two dollars a day, the news wasn't received well. We're speaking up against the president. He hasn't delivered on the promises he made during his campaign. From food to job creation, we haven't seen anything since he came into power. President Jovenel Moise took office last year, promising to improve the economy. The government says this move is part of that process. In February, Haiti's government agreed to reduce fuel subsidies in exchange for aid from the International Monetary Fund. <laughs> Protesters say they are tired of empty promises. They fear more prices will go up while their wages stay the same. Katia Lopez Odoyan, Al Jazeera. Even though Tropical Storm Barrel is getting weaker, no one is taking any chances in Puerto Rico where they're still recovering from Hurricane Maria. CNN's Layla Santiago now joins us from San Juan. And Layla, that storm is expected to hit tomorrow that we just saw on the graphic. Right. What are residents doing to prepare? 
Well, listen, a lot of people are still very anxious, um, still recovering from Hurricane Maria, and so they're still kind of wondering what will happen with Beryl when it comes to Puerto Rico. The government has said, do not let your guard down. Yes, this is weakening, but make sure you have what you need. As I have talked to folks, they have water, they have batteries, they are prepping, not taking any chances, as you said, but here's the problem. You see this right behind me? Uh, you see all those tarps that are still on the roofs of the homes? This is in Cantera. San Juan, Puerto Rico, an area that uh, really is prone to flooding. Uh, this is the problem. This is what a lot of people are worried about. The governor saying that there are still 60,000 homes in Puerto Rico that still uh, have these blue tarps on them. And that is a concern because, as you just heard, this will be the test. They really can't take several inches of rain. And then there's the power situation. The governor of Puerto Rico has said that this power grid is more vulnerable today than it was before Hurricane Maria, than it was before Hurricane Irma. Still today, more than 1,500 customers of the Power Authority do not have power because Maria wiped that out. And many people have just had power restored in the last month or two months. So many people, while they are getting ready, making sure they have that water, the food, the batteries, whatever they can to prepare, uh, many people are concerned that the infrastructure Structure here will not hold, that that will be the biggest concern. Now, there are shelters, about 24 shelters. Um, mayors have requested uh, to have them opened up. Uh, I'm being told that there, there still are pretty small numbers of people who have been going to the shelters, but many officials urging uh, folks that if you are in an area that is prone to flooding, if you have a tin roof, if you still have a blue tarp, seek shelter because this is an island that is very much vulnerable and something as small as a tropical storm or something much less could have a big impact. Japan has now lost over 100 people to flooding and the search still goes on for the missing. Sadly, dead bodies are being found. These firefighters in Hiroshima Prefecture are praying after finding one. In Kurashiki City, the most vulnerable are still being evacuated. Record amounts of rain have hit western Japan since Thursday and rivers have burst their banks. Two million people have been ordered to evacuate. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has cancelled an overseas trip to deal with what is the worst floods in Japan for 35 years. Over 11,000 households had no electricity, power companies said on Monday, whilst hundreds of thousands had no water. The persistent rain has ended, but officials are warning of sudden showers and thunderstorms, as well as the danger of more landslides on steep mountainsides. Since Japan is densely populated, every bit of usable land is built on in what is a mostly mountainous country.